flexing his muscle on the streets of capital Mali. Former Maldivian President Mohamed Nasheed shows that he's still a political force. He resigned earlier this month amidst protests against his government, but he now says he was forced out, virtually at gunpoint by rogue security forces. His vice president has taken over in what Nasheed calls a coup. We plan to see how we may be able to bring the situation to normality. We have to reverse it. We have to have stable government in the Maldives. I think it's very obvious that we have to go to elections. These calls have been rejected by the new president, Mohamed Wahid. The former UN official says the country is simply not ready for elections. They will be held next year as scheduled. Uh, it's not in the cards. Uh, I cannot accept uh, a rushed election at the moment. The crisis has divided the island paradise, better known for its pristine waters than its political problems. The country was ruled by one of the world's longest running dictatorships until elections in 2008 saw Nasheed sweep into power. Just three years on, many fear old political forces are trying to meddle with the nation's young democracy. Power will come from the people. No one can force themselves into power. The people will decide. We have already elected a president for five years. Before he could finish his term, there was a coup. It's very sad. There are calls for an independent investigation, but in the meantime, there have been reports of clashes between security forces and supporters of the former president on outlying islands. We've heard reports, for example, in, in Adu, that there were quite serious violations of human rights. Um, there were reports of beatings. There were reports of uh, that lawyers um, of the those who are in detention have not had access to those in detention. The Maldives is now at a crossroads. It's not only the government, but the country's democracy that faces uncertainty.